On April 10th, the FDA issued a guidance for pharmaceutical compounders experiencing shortages of personal protective equipment, PPE, during COVID-19. This guidance discusses how pharmacies can conserve PPE when supplies are limited or when unable to obtain significant supply. Dr. David Husong breaks down how the guidance applies to compounders. FDA just released uh, a temporary uh, guidance document describing how to handle the shortage of personal protection equipment in compounding settings. And this is an important need. We just don't have enough equipment right now. People are trying to conserve it. Uh, yesterday, we discussed methods to try to approach the problem and some of the realizations that we're coming to. Uh, FDA has now acknowledged this in their temporary guidance. And what they're firstly doing is acknowledging the shortage and how it can be severe depending on where we are. So they've offered some recommendations. Uh, CDC also had some recommendations. And the, the recommendations by FDA are pretty direct. I think they could be expanded a bit more. But primarily, they're saying to limit, for example, the number of personnel that are involved in compounding. That doesn't work perfectly well when you have a, a production need and patients need their, their drugs. So it's, it's not the best solution. So there are other alternatives FDA has suggested. You know, reduce sterile compounding is just not a, a good alternative. It may be one of those things that's going to happen, but they do provide some alternatives. And um, I think we should go through these as best we can. Um, one acknowledgement is that there are other PPE that provide equal or better protection. Uh, and the concern, of course, is when we're making sterile products, is the operator does not contaminate the product. So acknowledging all of this, a point that has been made is this does not apply to the hazardous drugs. We still need to have a very good control of the contamination that could happen with uh, hazardous drugs. So that may be an area that gets cut back. Certainly some of these can and some of these can be reduced in, in production. So what FDA has acknowledged is that they will not undertake enforcement actions under certain conditions. Primarily is when the compounder can't obtain standard personal protective equipment. But the drugs still have to meet the requirements of 503A regulations. Uh, the compounder has to undergo mitigation strategies to reduce contamination without the standard PPE, or they have to switch their sterile processing to, to uh, terminal sterilization where standard uh, PPE would be used for aseptic processes. Uh, we can discuss that separately on another occasion. It may not work for uh, many of the compounding uh, community. Uh, there are two edges to this that we should consider. One cuts to protection of the, uh, the worker and the other cuts to the protection of the product. Um, in either event, we have to consider what's the value of the PPE and how is it needed um, and used. In the case of protecting product in particular, uh, it's accepted that you will, will have to use PPE, but perhaps it may be expired. So they're relaxing the requirement that uh, use only unexpired PPE. In this case, it has no physical defects, no physical discoloration and of course holes uh, may be uh, a good practice to go ahead and use it. It's better than using nothing or using up the remaining supply completely. Um, if the masks are unavailable, there are some alternatives. I don't recommend using something that is a woven fabric uh, when dealing with aseptic processing. Uh, they do mention this, but I don't believe they intend that for aseptic uh, practices. Um, masks can be reused when sanitized with an appropriate disinfectant. Uh, there are 
uh, other practices that are recommended separately in the emergency use authorizations that require use of a very large and complex sterilizer that uses vaporous hydrogen peroxide. Most facilities won't have that available. However, they, they mention how to use an appropriate disinfectant. Uh, they don't go into a, a great deal of detail. Um, common sense will dictate the use of application of certain things such as hydrogen peroxide. Um, so if masks are totally unavailable, this is when they mention the use of a, a clean fabric that is low uh, linting and a new covering should be used for each compounding session. That's going to be a very interesting uh, tightrope and keeping that balance is going to be uh, a challenge. If sterile gloves are not available, they say go ahead and use non-sterile gloves that are disinfected. That will be, again, an issue to deal with on a case-by-case -case basis, but disinfection is not something to take on lightly. Uh, have to understand we're trying to kill a virus here, and in the case of aseptic processing, we're trying to eliminate all forms of contamination. And they also had that uh, foot covers should not be reused, uh, instead, uh, dedicated and disinfected shoes should be uh, used. That's a very useful recommendation for going in and out of just routine compounding areas. I have some problems with that in terms of aseptic processing. Uh, total antimicrobial uh, barriers are really important. So to reduce uh, the contamination, again, increase cleaning and disinfection. Um, use of sporicidal agents, they say judiciously, and I believe the, uh, the term should be better defined to understand what judicious means, but sporicidal agents are also toxic, so we have to be aware of that. Again, disinfect the gloves more frequently. Um, FDA has also recommended more environmental monitoring. Uh, that, that's important aspect to understand that your system is in control. Uh, it may or may not give you good information, but it cannot hurt other than costing you a few more uh, media plates. Um, they want reduced uh, beyond use dates for these products, down to 24 hours at room temperature, uh, three days at refrigeration, and 45 days for a frozen product. Um, and then the um, sterilizing filtration during compounding is, is again emphasized and we'll have to take that up in a separate uh, session. Uh, bottom line in all of this is FDA acknowledges that some of the controls will not be as exquisite as expected under normal circumstances, but the drugs still have to come out. You can find more information about the guidance document on our website at www.eagleanalytical.com forward slash COVID-19.